You think Einstein walked around thinking everyone was a bunch of dumb shits? I'm putting my suit on and my phone rings and my agent says, which I later found out was a lie. Cameron Crowe wants you to do a read through with Robin Williams of his new movie and he only wants you. And I said, when? They go, today at one o'clock. Now this is 10 a.m. Today at one o'clock. I go, what? I, 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 what's the script? It'll be in the limo t that you can read on your way to the press conference and then you can go to Sony and sit in the, in the parking lot. You'll have two hours to read the script. That was my introduction. I go, oh, 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 what's the character? What's the character? A flamboyant football player, wide receiver in the NFL. So I paced around the room and I looked at myself and I go, all right. So I cut <laughs> my goatee and made it a mustache. I was already bald, so I was stuck with that. Uh, I put those earrings back in from the fan thing. I put the suit on. My assistant drove, got a six pack of beer. We went to the parking lot of the Sony thing. And I read, 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 finished one beer. Read, 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 finished fourth beer. <laughs> you know, Cameron's script was like 135 pages. It was like six beers. Like, Sean, go get us another six pack. Get us another six pack. I finish it. And I go, I know who this motherfucker is. I know who he is. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> and I, seriously, I, I, I know I, every character is a walk. And this is exactly how I walked into the room. Like, like yo, what's up? <laughs> Yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Yo. And Cameron wasn't there yet, but a couple executives were. A couple of actors, Mira Servino was in the room. And I know they were looking at me like, who's this arrogant prick? And then Robin Williams came in the room. And we were all sitting, and I still, because I was buzzed off the beer anyway, and I was, you know, just kind of swaying, just trying to stay in character. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know? And Robin walks in, and they sat him right across from me like this, and there was a boxing match in Vegas. And he looks at me and goes, did you see that McNeely fight? I go, he knocked that mother out! <laughs> and everybody laughs. I go, you know what I'm saying, Robin? You know what I'm saying? Don't leave me hanging, Robin. That's what I'm talking about. And Cameron goes, let's start the read-through. And the rest was history. At the after the read-through, he said, Robin read this as a favor for us. This is really for Tom Cruise. I didn't know, this is what he tells me. I didn't know who you were before the read-through, but I know now it's your part to lose. And I was like, that bitch lied to me. <laughs> Thank God I didn't know that. I'd have been, who knows? So then I came back and did the exact same read-through with Tom Cruise, same room, same kids. And then I came back and auditioned again because he, he, the studio didn't just want him to give me the role. They, they wanted a, another actor, a couple other actors. And then I finally got it. So that's it. Show me the money. <laughs> I'm getting dressed to go to the set. And at 9 a.m., my assistant comes in the room and says, they're about to start filming and want to get you on the phone. I go, what? What do you mean? He goes, Tom got in early. They're going to shoot the scene. They need you to start. They're going to roll tape, and you, you'll do it fine on the phone, just in the car on the way. And at the time, I lived in the valley, and I had to do the 30-minute drive to Sony Studios. And I'll never forget it like it was yesterday. I, I was doing basically this performance. I was probably on my third or fourth take. Sean had driven through the gates of Sony Studios to the sound stage gotten out of the car, and I don't know where I am because I'm in my zone. He's standing outside. What happened was, because you've seen the scene, the police showed at the lot because there's this angry black man yelling in his suburban outside a sound stage, threatening to kill people, and he loves black people or whatever he's saying. <laughs> there's a crowd around my suburban while I'm doing that scene outside the sound stage, and when we finally got it, we got it. And then a month later, I did that in Arizona, and Tom was in London doing his part. Jesus. Isn't that crazy? Well, I'll tell you, I won the Academy Award and walked on that stage and emotionally lost my mind. I forgot where I was and who I was for a minute because I think I had, you know, I was... That was the one opportunity in my career where I, I was closer to that character than any other character I'd been before. 
Rod Tidwell had a young family with a baby on the way. I had a young family with a baby on the way. Rod Tidwell was, in his mind, better at what he does than anybody else. I felt I am. Um, and Rod Tidwell had been acknowledged for his accomplishments. And that night on that stage, I was being acknowledged by my peers. So I think the emotional response I gave on that stage was the same, <laughs> the same thing Rod would have given. Studio, I love you, and Cameron Crowe, and uh, Tom Cruise. I love you, brother. I love you, man.